Hello everyone, and welcome to our game of World of Warships. Today's replay is from Nefran, and I'm terribly sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Now he is in the Prince Eitel Friedrich, a tier 6 German battleship. He's on the map straight in a free point domination game. So this is a tier 6 battle. Uh, there is a carrier, but pretty, pretty lovely matchmaking there. Now, it's actually a uh, fun thing about this replay. This replay was sent to me not by Nefran himself, but by Old Dog, uh, the enemy Texas. So basically, after the battle, Old Dog uh, contacted Nefren and they chatted, and he asked him for the replay, and then he sent me the replay because he thought this was a lovely game. Now, if you think about that, he was imp so impressed by the enemy that he asked the enemy for the replay just to send me the replay. I thought this is an amazing story. So, anyway, let's get into this battle. Now, Nefren is aggressively pushing here on the right side, which is pretty lovely. I mean, he is a top tier German battleship. And I feel like that's exactly the place where he should be. He has some support here. He has his destroyers in front of him. There are torpedoes going towards the enemy. He has the cruisers behind him. And he has a New Mexico who is. Uh, just should be <laughs> probably a shame. Oh boy. Okay, let's forget that New Mexico. But there we go. There is a devastating strike. The enemy showed a lot of broadside. And we all know what happens to broadside. Well, at least if you get lucky, I suppose. Now, there is another broadside. Let's see if we can get lucky again. And it's it looks like a naked Pepsi Coke. And yeah, I know, you know, RNG, give it RNG, take it away this time. It was not meant to be. Now he is keeping angled, he's slowly pushing forward here. It's like, I don't know, I was thinking the Mutsu would eat. Actually, more torps there. There are more torps on the way. Now, on the other flank, the friendly team is doing weird things. We have the October Revolution alone pushing, we have the others unsure what to do. We have the Congo, who is just abandoning this and going north. Well, here up in the north, we have the New Mexico, who is still desperately trying to not be part of this battle. For whatever reason. And, oh, yeah, the Iron Duke just took some drops. Uh, we have the destroyers who are taking the ACAP and who are actually the... Well, they are very valuable support here for our Prince Eitel Friedrich. Now, the cruisers, I mean, they are cruisers. They want to stay a little bit of distance and then just go for some long-range high-explosive pew pew. So that's okay. Uh, I'm not sure why the Molotov is leaving, though. I mean, maybe he isn't leaving. Maybe he's just the way he's currently maneuvering. But you definitely want those cruisers to stick around and help burn down those battleships. And, I mean, that Mutsu seems to be burning, so that's lovely. So the Mutsu is relatively broadside, the Pepsi is somewhat broadside, there are a lot of good targets to shoot at, unfortunately RNG has to also say yes, and RNG is uh, quite fickle. Oh, we got a secondary fire here, that's lovely, the Mutsu already had a fire going, so now there is more. And yeah, the Mutsu is starting to angle, so he uses his guns to go for the Pepsi, I agree with this choice. And there is the Citadel we've all been craving. Now the problem is the Mutsu actually has torpedoes. The thing of, uh, is the, the Mutsu torpedoes, they reload relatively quickly, but the Mutsu only has two launches on each side uh, with one torpedo each. So that's only two torpedoes, but he has to give complete broadside to use it. Now the Mutsu is doing that, he's giving complete broadside, so the torps are coming. And well, the Mutsu goes down, the torps, I guess two of them, they don't hit hard enough. But oh, Prince Eitel Führich did lose quite a bit of health there. But so far, so good. The Pepsi is almost down. The Iron Duke is slowly getting riddled down. So let's let's go for the Pepsi. And oh, there goes the Pepsi, I guess. And yes, the cruisers are still sticking around here. The Molotov, even though he was looking like he was sailing away earlier, decided to stick around. So good trip on the cruisers. The friendly destroyers got taken out. I'm quite unsure how they managed to do that, but well, they managed. 
now the Iron Duke is dealt with, there is a Pyotr around, and there is still an enemy Wispy somewhere. Now the Congo has arrived from the south, for reasons unknown. He could have stayed down there and fought, which would have been much more beneficial for the team, but you know. Uh, the New Mexico is still confused at where the battle is, and... Uh, Ooh, the Wispy is getting low can the secondaries? Yes, the secondaries can get the Wispy, so that's very nice. Now there might uh, yeah, there, there are torpedoes on the way and unfortunately not quite able to dodge. And there is a flooding, but damage con is almost ready again. The heal is also soon ready again, but <laughs> it's getting a... Uh, well, elves are getting very low here. Immediate damage con there. Now he needs to survive another 10 seconds and he needs to be not set on fire again. Now he's angling there very nicely. The rear guns are coming around here. The front guns are prepared. The front guns might not be reloading time. Oh, and the turret traverse isn't enough, so he switches to his rear guns because they can certainly get the job done. Nicely handled. The heal is running and he is alive. Unfortunately, he's already tanked there. And there is a completely healthy darker. Now, he is detected, uh, but, oh yeah, he, the Dunkirk is too close, he can't go into concealment here. Now, in a, on a point like this, what you would want to do is well, get to concealment and wait for the next heal to come. But if you're low health in a battleship, but you still have heals, your priority is probably surviving until a heal is ready, healing up again, and then returning even stronger. And right now that's exactly what he is trying to do. He is almost outside of the Dunkirk. There is an Eagle, but the Eagle is in smoke, I believe. So, yeah. He is undetected. Now, <clears throat> sorry about that. Now, another 35 seconds until the heal is ready. And unfortunately, somebody saw him because the Eagle decided to actually emerge here. Now on the bright side, you shoot the destroyer who is not too far away. Why is he going for the Murmansk instead? I think I would have been going for the destroyer there. I mean a cruiser is tasty, especially if the Murmansk decides to go for a broadside on him. Murmansk is currently in the turn. And it's three over pens. In New Mexico, actually, that's, he, he has managed to go to the 8 line, so, you know. I, I wonder whether New Mexico spawned, I didn't pay attention, but uh, he managed to go to the 10 line and now make his way back to the 8 line, so there is that. But meanwhile, Nefron just uh, got himself some more months, so that's lovely, it's his 6th kill, and this battle isn't looking too bad. Of course, it could still change. The Ranger might be somewhat cornered there, although not really pressured at the moment. The enemy team still has the capture points right now. And as we all know, that might just in the long run be a problem. But the friendlies just have so many more shields. And another lovely salvo there at the Murmansk. It's a high caliber and a confederate and another citadel. Now the egg is getting low. Maybe the friendlies can finish that off. That would deprive the enemy of their last destroyer. And in a domination game, that's certainly very helpful. It looks like his shells didn't hit. What a, what a shame. Well, let's have a look around. The New Mexico is obviously on full health. Not a single hit point lost. Then again, I mean, he hasn't actually been in an end fight, I think, this entire game. The Congo also very healthy. I mean, the Congo spent uh, most of the battle just running away. He's fairly north for the... Well, when you consider that he spawned in the south. Well, there is a Murmansk, or I should I say there was a Murmansk. There is another Citadel, because why not? And you see, points-wise, uh, the enemy team is actually still in this. It's just the chip-wise they are looking little bit thin there 
Although the Koenig spec is probably going down. And that would make it a 4 against 2. And while those are not very great odds, they are odds that you could overcome if the enemy makes mistakes. Like for example our Prince Idol Friedrich isn't that healthy, he has his heal ready, but he has barely any healable damage, so he is keeping his heal in reserve. The Molotov is a cruiser that... I mean, how healthy is the Molotov? Pretty, I mean, the friendlies are pretty healthy, except from their front here. But, you know, keep in mind that the Molotov could easily get the crap citadel out of her. And while the Congo in Mexico, well, if they show broadside, so you know, anything's still possible. Now, Nefron has a choice to make. He can go through this gap into the B camp, or he can just continue sailing south. Now, since the Kongman in Mexico are actually going towards B here, and oh, there is a front. So, he switched for one salvo here to high explosive because the Texas was angled, so wise choice there. And he was even rewarded with a fire. Now, as I was trying to say, the Congo and the New Mexico, they are going here straight towards B. You don't want all of your three battleships at the same position, because that means that you can angle against all three of them quite easily. On the other hand, if it comes around like this, then the enemies might just have to decide who to angle against. They can catch them off guard in a crossfire and hopefully do a lot more damage. And, you know, let's speed it up slightly while he is making his way around here. And there we go. You see, the Texas is currently angled against the Congo and the New Mexico. And he's very well angled against those, but he's showing full broadside to our Prince Eitel Friedrich. And, well, I mean, that's, that was a nice salvo. Now, Efron here is already turning away. He doesn't want to risk a return salvo like that. And the Texas is starting to angle more here against him, but, you know... He is already getting pretty low there. Now the Molotov arrived. And well, the Texas is dead anyway. So that just leaves the enemy Darkirk against four ships. And these have managed to sail into the beaker on the way to the last enemy ship. They might even flip it. So points wise, as I said, like the friendly team doesn't have very high lead when you consider the fact that they have three more ships but with uh, friendly ships inside the B camp the enemy team is not gaining on them and it's unlikely that the Dunkirk is sinking for although I mean he could easily sink the Congo I think he's getting on low health then he could sit uh, probably the Molotov and <laughs> so let's just say it's probably not happening Especially if he decides to go broadside here. Now I can understand why the Dunkirk wants to turn around. But... Uh, full broadside is never really a good choice. Oh, he keeps turning. He should have just like put his nose like uh, this way, I think. So... If he would have put his nose uh, more like towards the Molotov here, he, I mean, the Congo was going, uh, was already pretty low, so he could have taken out the Congo before he got into a good flanking position. That New Mexico isn't a threat to anyone anyway, then he could have just faced the Prince Eitel Friedrich and the Molotov there. But, you know, this is over, and this is a win. So unfortunately I don't really have the results screenshots here, but it was definitely a great fight by Nefran there, and he performed very well. So yeah, and I thought it very nice that the replay was actually sent to me <laughs> by a whole dog from the enemy team. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time.